Oh, hi. Years ago, our florist showed me the surefire way to get the perfect dome-shaped bouquet by simply crossing the stems over each other. And today, I'm letting you in on my secret. This is one of my favorite classic elegant ways to show you the basics of building a beautiful bouquet. And also, this is really my favorite kind of floral bouquet. Um, it's just beautiful white roses with a little greenery, very elegant, very sweet. First step is flower food. And when you pour the water in, it will bubble up a little bit and that's totally normal. That's the flower food working. <laughs> The rule of thumb when you're doing a bouquet is to hold the flower on the edge of the table where your vase is, go up and down and see where you want the height to hit. So, I kind of want it right about here. That's gonna be my tall girl. It's gonna be my basketball player. It's gonna be my model. She's actually too tall. Sorry, honey. So, with roses. The trick is to take all of the little leaves off so that nothing inhibits the water from getting to the petal where you really want the water to focus on going. I want something a little shorter. Cut roses at a very dramatic angle. That way you have the most possible surface area. Soaking up the water. I love a mint julep cup with white anything. Another gorgeous thing to do is pair white roses with white hydrangeas and put them in like a clear glass vase. There's a couple of Jaliska vases my eye has been on for, for a minute that I want. They'd be, they'd be gorgeous. Okay, so leaves off. After the first few roses, you can eyeball where you need to cut them. These are just so beautiful. I gotta brag on my husband. He got me these for our anniversary. He knows I love white roses. They're so sweet. I think that's why I like them so much. They're just sweet. Oh, there's a bud coming up, but I feel bad to take it off. But it's just gonna hinder the water absorption. really am, I'm taking everything off. Oh, and I have a hack for you. With your thorns, what you wanna do is put your finger at the side of it and push it to the left or right, and it will come right off, easy peasy, and then you don't have to worry about your thorns. This is looking so utterly gorgeous. Bye, leaves. Sorry. Got a lot of big ones, I need some shorter ones now. Yeah, that's cute. Oh, that is a gorgeous rose. These are just so beautiful. Oh, they're opening up so lovingly. And I can already tell I'm gonna need to cut some of these even farther down because I don't have enough space filled on the bottom tier. All right, so this one needs to be cut shorter. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. And listen, when you're doing, when you're arranging a beautiful bouquet of roses, don't feel bad to cut them down because like, they're fine. <laughs> they're supposed to be cut down. You're supposed to make them how you want them. You're supposed to enjoy them. So don't feel guilty about cutting them down, especially if you know what you're aiming for. I mean, can we just look at how beautiful this is looking? Look how beautiful this is already. Now that they're all cut correctly, I need to lay them correctly into the base. So I'm gonna actually take them out, put them to the side, and I'm gonna look at the 
I'm gonna look at my shorter ones and I'm gonna start with the shortest ones. I take the short ones and I position it so that it's completely hanging off the edge. The stem of it is going at the, it's hitting at the far left of the bottom of the vase and it's coming out of the right top. So what you wanna do with six of the flowers at the bottom layer is start crossing them over each other so that they kind of sit like this in the vase but you're going to go all the way around and keep crossing them oh, i need to cut him a little bit more keep crossing them over each other so one two three and then yeah cross him over him over I need another shorty that'd be a good one over each other and that way it's like kind of like a pinwheel that way it's totally even at the bottom layer and you four on top of this layer just like that you're too long you're still too long and at this point the roses are not going to be touching the bottom Four on this layer, layer. Four. See, we're getting a nice dumb shape there. And then I have one flower left that is the longest one to go right in here. And that way you have a really nice, sweet little dome shape. Rose bouquet in your mint tulip cup. I love her so much. Look how happy it is. It's so simple, it's so elegant, and it is timeless. Timeless, and roses last a good long time. Especially if once a week you replenish their water, like you'll wanna take out this water, refill it up with water, and then put more flower food in there, and then give them a nice chop again in a couple of days, give those roots more um, clean service area to soak up the water. Let me show you what the roses looked like two days ago and what they look like once they're cut. So an old flower stem looks kind of like this, like there's not a lot of new area to soak up the water. It's really saturated and really soggy. So what you wanna do every few days, cut your stem at a dramatic angle so that it has that beautiful, bright, fresh surface area with which to absorb the water. And here's the final result. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm obsessed with her. I love mint julep cups and I love the white roses even more because when you have this in a room, the way the light reflects off of it is just magical and dainty. That's, I think, why I love this so much. It's dainty. It's not in your face. It's just an elegant touch of real breathing, beautiful plant life in your room that blends in beautifully with your surroundings. So I hope you've enjoyed how to make a cute little mint julep bouquet. This was a very beginner level kind of thing and I love doing the crisscross method. So you do six at the bottom layer, four at the middle layer, and then three or two at the top, whatever you have. I hope that was helpful, showing you how you do six flowers crossing over each other at the bottom layer, and then four flowers crossing over each other at the middle layer, or in, and then three, two, one at the top to make a beautiful dome shape in your flowers. I'm obsessed with this. This is my very favorite little luxury. You know, it looks like a little luxury in a flower bouquet, but it's so sweet. And the way the light reflects off of my mint julep cup, I just love it. It's my favorite. So, hope you guys had fun with this one today. I can't wait to show you the next one. It's so happy right here. I love pairing my mint julep with this gorgeous silver antique tray. We found it in a state sale. So gorgeous. Okay, this gives me an idea of something I've never done before, but speaking of white, all right, beauties, 
I've never done this, and why? I've never done a what's in my bag. My gorgeous Lacey Lurch tote. I keep a couple of quirky things in my purse at all times. Oh, starting with tea bags. I, I'm a British person at heart, I really am. This is a mint blend herbal tea. I like to keep tea bags in my purse because like when we go out to dinner, sometimes, <laughs> this is so me. Sometimes after dinner or before dinner, I like to have a hot cup of water, especially after dinner sometimes. And I like to have peppermint tea because it helps with digestion. And also I can just ask for hot water and they don't charge me $5 for hot tea because I have a tea bag. <laughs> So I keep tea bags in my purse at all times. Then I have a gorgeous silk scrunchie by my friend Courtney who owns CB Gray. These things are amazing. I love her scarves and her scrunchies and all her headbands. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. My sunglasses. These are the Amazon sunglasses. I'm obsessed. I mean, yas. Bring me my poolside. Mmm, bina colada. Under $20 Amazon sunglasses. The reason I adore these is because I, I've i never treated my sunglasses well. I always just toss them in my purse or they always end up getting sunscreen on them or I, I don't know. Like I, I'm not nice to my sunglasses and I have a pair of Ray-Bans but I don't wear them often because they're too nice for the way I treat my sunglasses. So I have like five pairs of these. I'll leave the link below. You can shop all of this stuff. But yeah, that's my little sunglass hack. Just find a great pair that look expensive, but aren't, and buy multiples. The next thing I have is my NARS lipstick that I always wear. The color is Dance, I don't know how to say that. Dance Terrier something. Okay, what's next? Oh, this, you're gonna laugh at me again. My vitamin D gummies because <laughs> vitamin D is so hugely important for me but also during COVID like I started taking vitamin D on the regular and it, it feels like I'm taking happy pills so I just kept taking vitamin D. Get the ones with vitamin K2 because vitamin K makes vitamin D more soluble in your body. Moving along. This is awesome lip stuff. Okay anything Revision Skincare makes it's in my shopping cart and or my Christmas list and or my bathroom. So this is their Youthful Lip Replenisher. This is the best lip stuff I've ever put on my lips. The only caveat to this is that it's really shiny and sticky, but it works. I only use this at night. It should be by my bedside table, but it is pretty sticky. But I do keep it, I keep like an extra one in my purse if I'm just gonna be traveling or whatever. Amazing lipstick. Oh, this is the best stuff. Okay, fun fact. Your lips don't have a normal moisture barrier. Your lips are unlike any other skin on your body. They are completely unique to the lips. So, I started putting CeraVe Hydrating Hyaluronic Acid Serum on my lips instead of chapstick that's just gonna dry out my lips. I need, like your lips, it, it is harder for your lips to retain moisture. That's basically what it is. So instead of chapstick that dries out your lips, I have started using this gorgeous CeraVe hyaluronic acid stuff and it's a game changer. I put it on my lips before I put lipstick on. I apply this all the time. I have so many lip products. <laughs> ah, wow, I'm not even done with my lip products. Hang on, there's, an, yeah, okay. This is my Lip SPF by Elta MD. This is their UV lip balm. If you don't have this, get it and get multiple tubes because I have one in my purse, one in my car, and then I think one in my um, beach bag. Essential. Essential. Again, because your lip skin is unlike any other skin on your body, so treat them very well. I have a long history of biting my lip, so that's a habit I am trying to kick. and I'm trying to kick that habit so hard. If y'all have any suggestions for how to quit habits that you hate, leave them below because I'm trying to quit biting my lip, obviously by putting all of these lotions and potions on them. That should be the last lip product. Next, I always keep a spare stevia for my coffee if we go out somewhere, for my tea. I drink lots of tea. <laughs> I'm so clumsy, so I have a Band-Aid. 
and then my wallet. Oh, you know what I realized about wallets? I don't like a big wallet. I love this size wallet. It's it's a Kate Spade. It's old. I mean, it's old, but it's all I need and it's so light. I switched five or six years ago from a big wallet to just one of these and I have never looked back. It's not a card case. It's a little more than a card case. It has a zipper pocket and it has like a pouch and then card areas, but that's all I need. Everything here, like 17 Starbucks gift cards, I can fit everything in this thing. Actually, you know how Caroline just had a baby? I got her something very similar that she can keep in her diaper bag that's so lightweight because she did have a big wallet. So she's also a recent convert to my ways of life with the tiny wallet. Oh, by the way, does anyone else still use headphones that have the cord? <laughs> Am I a green mom? I just still have these. They do the job. <laughs> oh, well, then I have a sweet, oh, this is from Father Mugaga. Father Mugaga gave me this bracelet, it has a little Africa charm on it. He's a very, very special person to me and Steven. He gave me this one Christmas Eve, I think we were at Steven's parents' house. He's like the adopted brother of the family. <laughs> Cause he doesn't have family here, he's from Nigeria. We just had such a fun, we always have so much fun with him and I love talking about God with him. I think I keep this as a reminder of like how important it is to love people. Even at a busy party, he always devotes time to talk about God with me and get into like deep theological things. But it just, I think this just reminds me how, how much love really does mean to people and showing people love really is gonna be the thing that transforms our world. So I keep that here. I just, I love him and I miss him after church. Sometimes we'll literally like kidnap him and take him to Steven's parents' house for dinner. <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's all I keep in my bag. Um, other than just different granola bars and trash that accumulates over time. <laughs> that is what's in my bag. I hope you've had fun taking a peek in her. <laughs> it has turned into a beautiful day. It is 70 degrees and sunny, and I'm in my favorite outfit. My sailor earrings, English factory dress, and my Patricia Green shoes. I just left church. I have to show you all something the sweetest thing today. I was sitting behind our friend Chris and Claire's daughter, Tierney. Claire was singing and Tierney was in the pew in front of me and Katie. We're like the groupie section because my husband does the music. And so Tierney made me the cutest little thing. It's so precious. I love it. I told her when I get home, I'm putting this on my bulletin board. So I am. I'm going to go to Trader Joe's and see if I can get some good sourdough bread. I can confirm that this is the best sourdough I've ever had. This is the Trader, and I've already had a couple slices of it, just so you know this is truthful. The sourdough boule, stone hearth oven baked bread. Just the right amount of sour. Thank me later. It's so good. You know what I like to do to this is to butter one side, put it under the broiler, or you can just pop it in the toaster, or you can just serve it like this with a little bit of butter. Thank you, Trader Joe's, for existing. Claire, I know you might be watching this, and Tierney's artwork is on my bulletin board in the office. Thought she should know. You know why I loved this? Because when I was watching her scribble in the pew in front of me and Katie, it was so sweet and precious and it was so abandoned and the colors were so beautiful and it made me kind of come back to the root of what art should be. It should just be your soul spilling out. And that is what this beautiful display will always remind me of. Love you tea. I just got an extremely exciting package from Caroline Hill. I'm so excited they reached out because their shop is absolutely gorgeous. 
absolutely stunning and I am already given a sneak peek into the package with these beautiful headbands. Look at these! I'm gonna unpack those and show them to you a little bit in a second. <laughs> you can see some of my artwork I'm in the middle of right there. All right, let's see. Oh my goodness. <gasps> That's the dress. I wanna rip the sticker. I'm so bad about that. I never wanna rip the sticker. That's a gorgeous dress. Ooh, <gasps> I can't wait to be wearing this in the summertime. Put her to the side. What in the heck? You guys are so generous. I saw this feathered dress on their website. It was the most stunning thing. I cannot wait to try her on for you. This is awesome. It's a leather purse, but it has like a texturing on it. Absolutely beautiful. It's so light and dainty. Okay, let's try these pieces on. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I kind of feel in this whole look, like a little bit of the groovy era, kind of like Charlie's Angels, the original. That's what I feel like with this look. And I am so happy about it. Like, ah, this is a peacock dress. This is a peacock dress. I love her. And everything on the Caroline Hill website is like under $100 or most, most of her things are under $100, which is so amazing. Like this dress is under $90. It's an amazing quality. It's so beautiful. And I am obsessed. I'm gonna go try on the other dress for you. And then I'll show you the purse. <gasps> How gorgeous is this dress? <gasps> oh, it has a strap. This is wonderful. Now I showed you the close-up of like, it's a leather bag, but it has like a textured detailing on it. That's really nice. Gorgeous. Ah, perfect summer bag. Perfect traveling bag too. If you're at the beach, hello. Yes. Gorgeous, or farmer's market. I love anything that lets me be hands-free. Ah! So this dress sadly is sold out on their website, but I did link to one from a different resource below. You can shop it and I love it. I'm gonna go bike in this dress. I'm gonna go ride the bike in this dress. I have stopped the bike. I have to show you these gorgeous plants that have started to bloom. I mean, wow, gorgeous. So if anyone knows what they're called, I wonder if they're azalea. I think they're kind of azalea, but they're gorgeous. Anyway, had to make that little stop. 